What is the last thing you created? And wait, before you get a chance to answer, everybody repeat after me. We are all creators. We're all creators. From the time that you're born, you're helping create your own perception of the world. Stay with me. Similar to the way that painters have their colors on their palette and they use those to paint masterpieces of the world, we use our same perception palette to create the way that we perceive the world. And while their palettes start neatly arranged, they end up in a mixture of colors that's a medley of madness. While their works that are gonna be seen in museums all over the world, in the Smithsonian, in the Louvre, Beyonce house. Y'all know Beyonce got Basquiat's in her house. <laughs> but what I'm talking about is only gonna live in our memories museum. So y'all, I wanted to do a big art project in here, but you know, budgets be budgeting, we couldn't do that. So we're gonna use our imaginations. So imagine your mind is a blank canvas that you're gonna paint throughout your lifetime with the experiences you have throughout your lifetime. We're gonna use our emotions, our experiences, and our senses. We're gonna be seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, smelling our way through our adventures, and those things are gonna paint our unique perceptions of the world. Let me ask you something. When someone asks you, what do you think? Where does your mind go? If you're like me, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> if you're like me, it does go everywhere. It turns into a whirlwind of memories, starting from me grocery, having grocery store visits when I was a child, to hating art classes, to all of the memories that I created here at the university. To now I'll be getting flued out to take pictures of people all over the world, creating memories of life, love, and happiness. It's a beautiful thing now. All of those things contributing to my perception palette. So stay with me and let's consider our childhood as black and white, pretty basic teachings, things that you kind of learn without knowing that you're learning them. And as a child, you don't really have much nuance. Nuance is a great word. Very rarely get to use it in a sentence. <laughs> Simply stated, when you're young, you see things as, you know, right and wrong, good or bad, black and white. Again, you don't really have much nuance. So remember going to the store when you were younger and you would get that, that talk, maybe a warning. <laughs> don't touch nothing. Don't ask for nothing because you ain't getting nothing. Kids don't care nothing about that. Kids don't even understand or subscribe to the concept of no. You don't care about that when you're a child. They're relentless in their pursuit of joy. Their curiosity is what makes them cool. As a kid, you just keep it positive from asking for toys as soon as you walk into that store and begging and begging, please, 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 as you get closer and closer to the checkout and finally you get told yes, man, that's a great feeling. That's a thing, that's a constant reminder that you put onto your palate. If you ask more questions, if you be a little more persistent, keep your eyes on the prize and keep it positive, you might actually get that thing that you've been asking for. And as we grow older, we start to try to experience things on our own, even if we're not necessarily ready to experience those things and probably against our parental approval. But this is great, right? You're starting to add your own little colors to your palette. You start to choose the clothes that you wanna wear, the friends you wanna hang out with, the activities that you like to participate in. You might've been a little risky and stayed up late, breaking phone curfew to talk to your best friend or that awkward crush that you used to have. If you were like me, you might've been a little aggressive or reckless with your decisions when you were that age. So that art class that I talked about hating, I only really hated the art class because I hated my own work. I had a negative perception of it. So I did all of the work, did all of the work, looked at the work, and never turned in the work. And because I didn't turn in the work, I didn't have grades for the work, so I failed the art class. And yes, you can laugh, the creative failing in art class. But my perception of my work changed very quickly because Christmas that year was not a good one. The Jordans that I was supposed to get for Christmas, I didn't get and rightfully so because I failed in art class. So what did I do? 
do I do better work, turn the work in, stop taking art classes altogether? Oh, I really think about that often. But realistically, I would just have to get over myself. I would just have to get out of my own way, stop having negative perceptions of the things that I built. I still think a little bit of that trauma from failing that art class exists because I'm still an artist and I'm sensitive about my work now. <laughs> but you guys are becoming young adults. Of course you know it all. But did you know that our brains are fundamentally flawed? Our brains are essentially operating on autocorrect. When you haven't had an experience, your brain just kind of tries to make it make sense when someone's telling you that story. Remember the first time you told somebody that you were going to college and specifically coming to Prairie View? I remember the first time my mom told me that I was going to Prairie View. And no, she didn't ask me, she told me that I was going to Prairie View. But I remember telling people that I was going to Prairie View. And I remember some of the responses were informed and you know, some people gave advice and it seemed like the misinformed, the, it seemed like the misinformed perceptions were coming from people who had actually never been here. They had never smelled, tasted the food, heard the band play. They didn't have any experience in Prairie View. They just heard whatever they heard from some people who also probably didn't have no experience in Prairie View. People that just be saying anything, right? Then you get here. So my first day at PV, it was slightly, eh, I don't want to say terrifying. It was slightly, I was slightly afraid. It was my first time coming. It was on move-in day. My fear was that my roommates would know each other. Back then, there were three of us to a room. My fear was that my roommates would know each other. And I would be the third wheel. It would just be weird. I wouldn't, wouldn't really have a, a cool experience. And that all changed. The first day that I got here, not only did my roommates know each other, they were best friends and they were cousins. They were from Brookshire, so I thought that I would definitely be the odd man out. But that same day, my perception changed again. Not only did they not leave me as the odd man out, they included me. They asked me if I wanted to hang out with them. And this is my first day on campus, like I said. They said, do you want to go watch the band practice? And I was like, watch the band practice? I don't want to, I don't, I didn't come from that. And I got there. And it was amazing. Because my band in high school didn't band like PV band did. So by the end of that first band practice, I'm like, man, we coming back tomorrow. You know, I, I was having a great time. A little bit, I was sold on Prairie View, despite what all those people were saying to me before I ever came. So after that, we go through Panther Camp our freshman year, start to go to class. I start to see and realize that there are so many different black people that I've never met. So many different types of black people that I've never met from different places, from different backgrounds, from different lifestyles. It was an amazing thing and sold. So from there, you, you start to matriculate, you start to decide what organizations you wanna join, what internships you wanna get into, and finally the celebration that is graduation. And then again, I wonder why all of those people said those things. But maybe they were just seeing it wrong. Maybe they needed to add more colors to their palette. Your perception of experiences are vastly different from before, during, and after you go through that experience, but it's the only way that you'll know. But now that you have that experience, you can use it and it goes onto your perception palette. And like I said before, our brains, they're powerful. They're constantly, constantly tricking us into thinking that we're perceiving the world as it is when we're only perceiving the world as it is to us. We are all in our own bubbles, no matter how much we think we're in everyone else's. While we're thinking that we're all seeing the world as it actually is, we know that we're not because we share our experiences with other people. We ask people, how was the food? We ask people about music. We ask people what classes to take, what professors to take, which is a reminder immediately that we are not experiencing the same and we want each other's feedback. Sometimes you might have to throw some colors onto your boring friend's palette. And y'all know what I'm talking about, that friend that goes on vacation but don't want to do nothing. Right. <laughs> Sometimes you might have to throw some colors on your boring friend's palette. You have to look at everything from everywhere and to be a little cliche, think outside the box. 
And I like to think that as a people, we have a responsibility to question everything from everywhere, challenging perspectives, challenging old traditions, even if they're our own. We have an obligation to look at everything from everywhere and to consider everyone, in my opinion. So that's what I do as a photographer. And in my real life, I look at everything from everywhere. My friends, they like to call it Dixon logic. And it's really just me playing devil's advocate, but like an angel. But as a photographer, I meet a ton of people. It's amazing. And it's amazing I get to speak with different people. You'd be amazed how much you can learn from somebody in a 30 minute photo session, different lifestyles and cultures, as I said before. And experience is like a gateway drug for me. The more experiences I have, the more I want to experience new things. The more diverse I'm making my palette, the more diverse I'm becoming, the more diverse your palette is, the more diverse you will be. So think about when you go on vacation, right? When you go on vacation, it's up. You're breaking all of the traditions that you, that you would normally do at home. You're speaking to people that you wouldn't normally speak to, getting out of your comfort zone, engaging in conversations that wouldn't normally apply. You're literally pursuing your fears, your dreams. You're being that kid that you were in the store. When you're on vacation, you live in fully in color. And it's so apparent because when you get back from vacation, you always want to go right back. You post something on Instagram saying, take me back. <laughs> so I think that life should be on vacation. You live boldly on vacation, you come back and you've painted vibrant strokes. You've added a bunch of different experiences to add color to your palette, getting rid of some of that black and white that we learned as a kid, but also still needing to remember that kid that we were and honor the joy and the curiosity and the adventures that we wanted to experience then. Our day-to-day -day activities are just as important as that. Even if it seems like there's no end in sight, daily tasks might seem mundane, seemingly boring, those brush strokes on your palette, those brush strokes might just be as important as the ones that you made while on vacation. And while we're going through our day-to-day, -day, we're perceiving the, the who, what, when, where, how, and, and, and why of things. While we do that, we have to take time, smell the roses, and understand that we're living a beautiful human experience that goes from day to day to day to day. And life is all about the extremes and everything in between. As we get older, we start to add more and more colors, shades, nuance to our palette. And as we're going through this thing called life, we have to remember that it's just a journey. Just a series of experiences, just a series of brush strokes on our blank canvas that we've created from the palette of experiences that we are drawing from. And remember, say it with me again, we are all creators. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to be painting until the very end. Y'all are great. Thank you.